Over the years, we've all seen numerous TV shows cut down in their prime. Shows that offered so much potential, and yet just as it began to pick up steam, it gets the axe. But what I'm here to talk about today is particularly sad, in that it never even made it past the pilot. In today's episode, I will be dissecting 2006's The Amazing Screw-On Head. Many years ago, a dear friend of mine pointed this obscure gem out to me, and after re-watching it recently, you can watch it for free on YouTube. I of course immediately purchased the DVD version for my ever-growing collection of obscure nonsense. The Amazing Screw-On Head was originally a one-off comic book made by hey, Mike Mignola. Yeah, him. They really plastered his name all over this, because clearly we all know Oh, look at that. Saw 2. That's a good one. Anyway, this was made back in 2006 by the Sci-Fi Channel. Back when the Sci-Fi Channel was halfway decent. And this was their logo. God, that makes me feel old. Brief tangent. Did any of you ever watch Sci-Fi back in the day when they had, like, these terrifying bumpers? I don't know about you, but these weird little TV spots both fascinated and kind of traumatized me as a kid. This was not a channel for a kid my age to be watching. I saw the Cube Trilogy on here for the first time, and they scared me so much that I now own them all on DVD. Anyway, this was made by the Sci-Fi Channel. Sorry, I mean, Sci-Fi. Idiots. This was how they chose to rebrand. The cast for this was very impressive, starring Paul Giamatti, who's always fun to watch, even in kids' shows, Patton Oswalt, who always gives a good performance, and David Hyde Pierce, who I know is capable of doing great work. Yeah, I know, that was kind of a backhanded compliment. Let me be clear, David Hyde Pierce is a great actor, but he's usually kind of hit or miss. <laughs> but in this, it's a definite hit. He was perfectly cast. Emperor Zombie, how'd you do? I'm here to advise you on dispensing horror in this modern military climate. But what is this about? I hear you desperately asking. Because that title says everything and nothing all at once. The 20 minute pilot starts right off by sucker punching you before you can even react. First it establishes the historical setting involving the civil war and espionage and... Wait a minute, does that say lycanthropy? Boom! Suddenly you have old women with machine guns and... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's hard for me to say this with a straight face. <clears throat> old women with machine guns. <laughs> and a very serious monkey wearing a crown. Because sure, why not? And then in barges this guy, looking like he just walked out of Wolfenstein. And then Abraham Lincoln rolls up in here and is all like, Get me screw on head. And it's like, the first few minutes of this are such a clusterfuck of confusion. And with that in mind, I can totally understand why this would put some people off. But I honestly can't imagine this starting off any other way. It immediately makes it crystal clear that you have to watch this with a certain mindset. Otherwise, you're just not going to have a good time. If you go in asking questions like, How can his disembodied head jump around on its own like that? Or, Why would the president ask a disembodied head for help with anything? Then clearly you're watching the wrong show. Okay, let me try to put into words what this is about. In an alternate version of history where supernatural forces and Lovecraftian monsters roam free, President Abraham Lincoln works secretly with an android who goes by, uh, screw on head. Or just screw. Or head. And his butler, Mr. Groin. I'm, uh, starting to reconsider making this video. It's a crazy setup, but I'll be honest with you, this is exactly my kind of weird. We have an awesome visual design centered around steampunk contraptions. 
We have the previously mentioned Lovecraftian Elder Gods. We even have a turnip containing a parallel universe. But most importantly, we have some very clever writing. There are just so many quotable lines in this. Yes, it's as I always say, all really intelligent people should be cremated for reasons of public safety. There is one scene in particular where Emperor Zombie, and yes, that is his name, is interrogating this scientist for some vital information, but he won't give it up. So what does he do? I'm going to smoke you. Now I know everything you know. This is a concept that could have failed from the word go, but it doesn't because the writing and the dialogue is just so much fun. There's this sharp self-awareness to it that I am such a sucker for, because it knows how ridiculous it is, and it embraces that without ever going too far or stating that too blatantly. The hero, the arch nemesis, the scorned lover, the bumbling henchman, these are all stereotypes that are played up and toyed with in ways that are very modern for something made in 2006. Damn you, Mr. Manifold! Excuse me. Damn you, Emperor Zombie! I honestly don't want to say too much more, because at only 20 minutes long, you really should just go and watch it yourself. I can promise that it will be time well spent. But before I close this out, I would like to briefly discuss the DVD, because no one seems to be talking about it. I'm sure those who would like to get this for themselves would probably like to know what it's like before buying. Honestly, the transfer is pretty solid. There are some shots in particular where the quality drops significantly from one scene to the next, and while that sucks, it doesn't really take away from the overall experience. There are a lot of noticeable animation errors, in particular with the mouth movements, but again, that just goes to show what little effort sci-fi put into this. The DVD gives you the option to watch it in widescreen or its original format, which I found interesting, but ultimately redundant. It comes with some pretty interesting special features, including a commentary track and a mini making of documentary. This really seemed like a passion project for everyone involved, but what I find hilarious is that even the creator seemed to have no idea what to do with the show when it was greenlit. As for the DVD in the case, it seems pretty cheaply made, and the episode description on the back is filled with typos and grammatical errors. However, one of the coolest things about this DVD is that it comes with this neat little comic book thing. It shows lots of concept art for future machines and characters that were going to be in the show, and it's just a lot of fun to look through. But in conclusion, this was a really strange show, but I can't help but feel the world was cheated by not getting more of it. The writing and visual style was so unique and creative, and to gather such a strong cast was just a stroke of luck. Seafy, you guys really lost out on this one. Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, be sure to check out my other episodes in the series. And maybe, you know, hit the bell down there? It was just a thought. <laughs>